Welcome back to the channel and part two in our uh, creating an idle clicker adventure capitalist ty uh, type app game in Python using Pygame. So uh, this video is going to be a continuation in what we've already created, which is uh, we've already drawn out this board, which has um, what's going to be the five buttons displaying the cash value of each task. And then we've drawn the outline of what will become the loading bar for each task. So if you want to follow along line for line, I recommend you either pause this video uh, on this code so that you can copy it down or go back and check out part one in the series. But without any further ado, let's get into it. So the next thing I want to do is create it to where if you click on one of these buttons, um, a loading bar of different speeds, because obviously the more valuable a task is, the slower the bar should load. Um, but I want to make it so when you click the circle, that bar goes across the screen from left to right. And then once it finishes, it's going to um, add money to your overall score. So to do that, we're going to need to um, kind of modify our draw task uh, uh, function here. And um, to do that, we're going to need a few new variables. So we're going to need a variable that's going to be true false boolean telling you whether or not it's time to draw the rectangle so when you click the button that's what will turn true we'll say okay it's time to draw the um, time to draw the button and then what we'll need to do is pass in a value saying how long to make that loading bar because what we're really doing is once per frame we're going to update the length of that loading bar and that's how we'll control the appearance of a continuous rectangle expanding from left to right and then we'll want a third one that I'll call speed. And that's how we're going to um, determine um, which ones are the fastest and which ones are the slowest. And so if we create all of this code inside of our draw task function, we don't have to do it five times for each of the different colors. We can just do it once for, um, for all of it, as long as we write it generically. So now that we're passing in draw length and speed, let's go ahead and take a look at um, what we're actually gonna do with those. So we're essentially saying um, that if the draw condition is true and length is less than 200, because that's the length of the full bar is 200. Well, if those are true, then what we want to do is we want to add speed um, to the length. So length is going to start out at zero for all of these because it's going to start out unclicked. and we're going to make the speed of like green, which is the top rectangle. We'll make it one. So each iteration, it's going to add a value of one to the length, but then that speed will go up to two, three, four, five. Um, actually, I'm sorry. I have that backwards. The fastest one will be green because it's worth the least money. And so um, we'll modify that using speed. And then um, we'll say else uh, we will do L if length is greater than or equal to 200 then what we need to do is we need to turn that draw variable equal to false and then we'll make length back equal to zero and then we'll do one more thing which is we'll actually add the value of whatever um, was just finished we'll add that to a variable called score and since score is going to be the same it's going to be your like constant money pot that you've made during the game we'll just make a global variable called score rather than um, do it as an individual okay and so um, the last thing is we're going to draw a third rectangle and this is actually going to be the loading bar so we're going to do pygame.draw.rect we'll put it on the screen again this one will be green, just like the first one that we made. Although, sorry, not green. It's going to be whatever color because we're keeping it generic. Um, and then this one is going to be 70. And then this will be Y coord minus 15, just like the first rectangle. And then the biggest difference between the first rectangle and this one is it's going to have that variable length um, as telling us what uh, what length to make it. So we're gonna need to pass a few things back out now. Um, and uh, since we actually want to be able to click on the circle, we have to call it something. So we're gonna return task, which is gonna tell us where the circle is so that we can click on it outside of the function. And then we need to return the length and we need to return the draw variable. So essentially anything that we modified in here that's gonna be not global. So score we don't need to return, but these three we do because we're modifying them in the outside world even though we're passing them into a function. 
Okay, so now we obviously we need to make um, a, a lot of variables in the outside world that we just called in this function. So let's go up to our game variables and we're gonna have five new true false variables for drawing all of our colors. We'll have draw uh, green, red, orange, white, and again, whatever colors you want to make, it's definitely more fun if you're following along. If you make this game your own, change around some colors, change around some values, make it fun for you, change up some speeds, change up some you know, monetary values, um, whatever you want to do. But essentially, these are going to be the variables that say when something is active or when it's not. So, like, when you haven't clicked the button yet, this variable sits at false. But then once you click it once, we're going to draw that rectangle once across the screen. And then once the rectangle is finished, it'll go back to false. So that's going to be the draw variable. And then we have to make all of our length variables, which are going to start out as zeros. Because just like I said, um, since everything is false to start none of it's been clicked we don't want that rectangle to even really populate yet so we're going to give them lengths of zero orange white and purple i really just picked these colors because i knew they'd show up okay on a black background you do whatever you want and then the last one we added was speed for each of them so like i said the green speed needs to be the fastest um and the Purple speed will be the slowest, but again, you can, um, this is really one of the spots where you can really make it your own game, play around with how quickly things change, different values, whatever you want, um, and that's going to, uh, that's going to really change, like, every time you play the game, how things modify and get changed will be based on variables like speed and value that you can modify. Okay, so those and then we want to make a global score so to start it's going to be equal to zero that's going to track your money throughout the game and then we're returning task length and draw and we need to pass in those three extra values to all of these so let's see i think it was draw and then it was length and speed so what's cool we wrote that code to be generic and now we can just add the variables to each of them, okay? And we're we're uh, returning task, we're returning length, and we're returning draw. And so just like this, we can do this exact same procedure for all three of these now. So instead of instead of task one green length and draw green, it's going to be task two red length and draw red and then um, the next thing that we'll do as well and instead of green value uh, draw green green length green speed we need to just whoops we need to just put all of that in terms of red so um, you can follow along if you want you can speed forward a little bit if you see where this is going because I am just gonna take the next minute here and add these task length draw all these new variables to each of them just takes a minute there's nothing too novel to say at this point but then the other thing you might be wondering I just kind of made that task thing where we pass the button uh, the circle back and we're assigning it to this variable task whatever um, the next thing we're going to do, because really all this stuff we're doing right now is meaningless until you are actually able to click the button. So that's what we're going to be doing next, is taking that task variable that we're passing back, and we are going to um, use that to actually do something. When you click on that task, um, we are going to make the rectangle start getting drawn. So that's what we'll do next. And task five, here we go. You may be looking at this and seeing a lot of duplicate code um, and saying, well, hey, I could uh, I could write like a for loop, put these in a list and iterate through the list. Um, definitely you could do that if you want to optimize this code a little bit. Um, I think this is kind of easy to see everything laid out and just understand where it's all coming from. But 
you definitely could eliminate some lines of code if you structured this to be like uh, in a for loop and run five times throughout the for loop. So uh, I'll just go ahead and run this, make sure I don't have any errors. But like I said, it's not going to run. Yeah, it's not going to run yet because we can't click on the buttons yet. So now we're going to go into our um, event handling code here and we're going to add some stuff based on no longer if event type is quit. Now we're checking to see if event type equals and this is going to be pygame.mouse button down. So this is when you click the mouse. Um, and the reason I pass those tasks now, hopefully this is what's um, what you've been waiting for. If you can use a pygame built in collide point function as long as you're getting a pygame object. So we're pulling that circle back out of the function that we drew and now we can use collide point with event.pause. So that event.position is something you pull back um, anytime you click. Uh, so event type equals mouse button down. The event position is going to have an X and a Y coordinate based on where you clicked. And so what we're saying is if you, wherever you clicked was um, on that green circle, then we want green to be equal to true. Okay, and we can copy this exact code and we'll do it for all five tasks. So task two collides with a mouse click, then we're gonna draw red. If task three collides with a mouse click, we're gonna draw orange. If task four gets clicked on, we will draw white. And if task five is clicked on, then we will draw purple, okay? So now let's run it, and I'm hoping when we click this, all right, we get a a bar of different speeds, so I'll go ahead and run a few of them, and you can see they run at very different speeds. Green is way faster than purple. Uh, I can start red after green, and they'll finish at the same time, or red before green, and they finish at the same time because green is faster. So again, if you're unhappy with the different speeds, you can change them around. You could make green a 10 and purple a 1 and, and everything else in between. You can modify them, play around with it as much as you want. Uh, the, the last thing I want to do in this video is um, actually track your money. So we made that score variable, but we haven't put it on the screen anywhere. And uh, I think that's what we should do next. So it actually will show you what like what the benefit of getting money is, right? Because um, we're, currently we're, we made it so that in our function it adds to your score every time one of those things completes, but we haven't shown that on the screen anywhere. So I'm gonna use that text again and to concatenate text, uh, you want to do a string. And some of this as we like get into it is going to start adding decimals. It can get really weird um, with like um, rounding. So I'm just gonna round this to two decimals for when we do start making it to where you can buy more and it starts giving you like fractions of dollars. Just round so it doesn't give you like 11 decimal points. Um, but then, so the first thing is to define what text you want, and then after that, you say true, and we want this to be white text on what we'll call a black background, and then we need to put this on the screen somewhere, so I'll put it at the very top, I will say screen.blit. Blit is block transfer, I believe is what it stands for, but it is just Pygames built in like okay now draw it onto the screen function so that's what it means and let's see if we run this now okay we get money zero let's see we had one dollar we had two dollars three all right sweet so that's working and now in just two videos we have created basically the the basic concept of like an idle clicker um, so in the next videos, we'll add the buttons to where you can buy more of the product, which will increase the value of each task. And then we'll also add the buttons for the managers, which are going to automate it once you buy them for like a hefty upfront cost. They'll run each task automatically for you. That's a big piece of idle clickers is setting up the tasks to sort of be automated. So hopefully you found this fun and useful and informative. If you did, I really appreciate a like on the video, a subscribe to the channel. It helps me out a ton. If you have any questions on what you saw here today or want to see anything specific in the future, be sure to let me know about it in the comments below. Be on the lookout for the rest of this series coming out in the next few days. And as always, good luck with your code and thanks for watching. Thanks. Bye.